Hi there, this is Anton from ORS. I'm going to show you in this little video how to make porosity analysis in Dragonfly on CT data of a concrete sample. So I will share my screen. I've got uh, version 2022.2. So this is a new release. And actually I'm going to load a session file with data in it already. What I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate denoising, which is typically the first step in the recipe of image processing, then segmentation of the pore spaces, then creating a multi ROI for analyzing the pore spaces and getting uh, porosity content, uh, pore size distributions and so on. So um, I hope this will be quite a not too long video. We have the data looking like this. And typically, we want to do a denoising, which leaves us with slightly smoother data, or less speckle noise. Um, if you look at that, it just makes the segmentation so much easier. So how, how we reach that state, I've already done it here, but we go to Workflows, Image Filtering Toolbox. This is a very powerful toolbox, which you can use. Um, for example, we can use a Gaussian filter. There are all kinds of... Um, Tool, uh, image processing tools here, but the smoothing tools are of interest. Uh, Gaussian in particular, you might also, if you have more time, um, look at the median filter and also some others are quite useful there. Um, we want to apply it here. I'm selecting the concrete, which maybe if you have only one data set, it will be selected by default. And the reason for this double panel here, two views, is it's a preview frame. So you can have a look carefully You can zoom into some feature of interest like that. You can contrast it in a good way. And then you can have a look, what does your image filter selection do to that? This is a compute selected preview. So it's quite fast and we want to use the 3D kernel like that. That's quite a nice one. And if you make five, it smooths it even more. If you make nine, for example, or 13, it takes uh, much more time. Some At some point, it will start to blur out the um, feature, and that's not what you want. So what you need to do to apply once you've selected your image filter of choice is click on Apply here, wait for it to complete, and then close the image processing toolbox. In this case, we've already done it. So what, what the next step in this process is, is to segment these pore spaces. The way we do it, we go to the segment tab. I'm going to demonstrate here, define range tick box. And then we're going to select lower Otsu. Otsu is a thresholding method, which is well established. And it takes basically um, all the pixels with gray values in this range, in this case from 0 to 15,834, which is calculated automatically based on the data, based on the difference between uh, pixels. So it works well with data with um, two material types, two main material peaks in the histogram. Um, you can also manually drag that, of course, and change it if you want, but we're going to use the automated one, which is the lower Otsu and add to new. So what that does is when you add to new, you must remember to tick off the, the preview. We have a region of interest now defining the pore spaces. So the next step here is we, if we zoom out, we see, ah, but we have all exterior air also in this region of interest. Quite easy to remove that, right click, refine region of interest, process islands removed by largest. There's a six and 26 connected option here. Don't care, it's not in the scope of this video to explain that, just use the six connected by default. And we remove the one largest connected pore space. And now we are left with the internal pore spaces. So we can call this internal pores, just so that we don't get mixed up because typically at this point, you want to know what percentage of the material does this make up? Um, what is the percentage of porosity? So for that, we also need a reference. We need to know what is the volume of the total material. So we go click back on the image channel and make a new region again, in this case, upper O2. 
So if we add, make a new region of interest of that, these colors are selected by default, by the way, each time different. So this would be the total sample. So if we put off the pause, we see, ah, but it's not really the total sample because there are now, it's all the material pixels that are painted. So what we want to do is we can use this tool, fill inner areas 3D. So it fills in all those pore spaces. So now we have really the full material plus pores, total sample. And we want to compare that. Once you clicked on it, you can compare it, come down to the right here and compare that with the internal pores. And you find the volume percentage here, the volumetric percentage of internal pores is 1.9%. At this given pixel size. If you're interested to know the pixel size, you can look here in the basic properties, take the width and divide it by the number of pixels, which I'm not going to do now. I think it's something like 20 microns or so, maybe 25 micron in this uh, scan. So the next step is to make an analysis, a deeper analysis of this porosity. Um, we want to, for that, to calculate values for each pore space separately, we need to create a multi-ROI. So we right click and go to connected components, new multi-ROI. What this does is, if you click that, each pore space inside the sample has now a different class in a spreadsheet. So now we are ready to calculate values for each pore space. The current color coding doesn't mean anything, There's, it's just separating the pores into different classes according to a color mapping, um, color changing method. Something I should have done, let me take one step back, I'm going to delete that. The internal pores are now including even pores with only one voxel, which is most likely noise. So depending on the scan quality, a good um, rule of thumb is to remove pores smaller than three by three by three pixels because having less than three pixels in one dimension across a feature is not a reliable uh, way of quantifying um, pores. So more on that topic another day. For now, we just come again to, let me show you again, we right click on internal pores and refine region of interest, process islands, remove by voxel count. So the minimum voxel count would be three by three by three, which is 27 and we then delete all pores which are smaller than that. So once we've done that, we can go again and create a multi ROI, which has now identified 1,200 um, pores in the, in the volume of, of that um, size larger than three by three by three. Okay, so now we need to calculate something. So we right click, and do a scalar generator, we want to calculate volume and equivalent spherical diameter. These are very fast and the equivalent spherical diameter is new to this latest release. What this does is it calculates the diameter of a, an ideal sphere of the volume in the previous um, calculation. So this is very fast and I will show you that. If you're interested in the longest diameter of each and every pore, irrespective of its um, dimension, it's good if it's a, especially if it's not spherical pores, this might be interesting. You need maximum ferre diameter. That is a bit slower, but then it gives you the maximum size of each individual pore. You can also calculate sphericity. Let's do that. So I'm I've clicked on compute. And once that's done, we must close this. Nothing is still color coded. We need to come down at the bottom here and select, for example, equivalent spherical diameter. Now we can see the pores are color coded according to this lookup table, which is uh, blue, purple, blue, green, and yellow. And the largest pore is yellow. And the largest pore in the volume is 3.6 millimeters in diameter. So the next step we want to do is to visualize that in 3D. So we go to the main tab here and we go to the quad view. And in 3D, we actually haven't even got the sample on yet, so we click on it, show it in 3D, and I'm just using a shortcut to get a, a quick render of the surface, and on the porosity also we want to see, see it. So you might notice while I'm busy that there's a pore space which is not color-coded, that's because that is not 
an internal core is connected to the outside. Again, that's a topic for a different day. We can close that those surface throats or openings and include this in the analysis, but not for today's video, short video. So um, what I want to show you here is um, on this um, 3D um, visualization, there's also a new feature, an edge contrast slider, which you can drag like this, which makes quite nice the transparency visuals to see the porosity inside the sample. And if you want to double click, you can see that a bit, a bit better. So of course you can also change the lookup table like this. Just um, you also need to click on it to get the legend at the bottom. These legends can be moved around, of course, and you can also right click on it and make it vertical. And if you drag it this side, it will be stuck on the left. And if you want to take away the text annotations, we can go to the um, scenes view and take away the, those. So we might want to um, double click on there and call this porosity. And then that's a nicer legend. So um, what I want to demonstrate briefly is if we don't want to, if we want to visualize only the biggest pores, but not to change the data, we can right click and go to measurement inspector. And we can say, okay, show me all the pores bigger than one millimeter only. These are all the pores bigger than one millimeter. They are hided, hidden out of range, or you can show all those below. It's now actually ranging. So the, the one millimeter pores are now blue and the biggest ones are, are red. So this is where you change the legend range. You can make it from one to three millimeters and you don't have to hide out of range. Now everything above three millimeters is red and below one millimeter is blue. Okay, let's close measurement inspector. And um, what I want to get to is now analyzing this statistically. So if you come, if you click on that multi ROI and you click on this histogram button, you see the equivalent spherical diameter histogram, which you can calculate. You can click on the log to see more of it. You can save the picture there, or you can export the CSV of this histogram. If you want to plot this yourself, you can click on this button here, export scalar values, which now exports all of these values in the spreadsheet. So you can take this equivalent spherical diameter out for each pore or export everything that you've analyzed so far, which was volume, spherical diameter, and um, sphericity. So you can also, let me demonstrate something else. If we change that to the sphericity value, this is a nice example where if we go onto this, we see that most pores have a value of sphericity of 0.62 approximately here. And what is that value? Let's see if we look at the mode that gives us a value here of 0.629. You can also calculate other things here automatically and you can um, copy that to clipboard uh, or cut and paste. Okay. So I think that's everything I wanted to demonstrate. And um, if you're interested in, I, I, I'm not gonna include it in this analysis here, but if you have aligned data and you want to make a slice analysis, you can right click on any view and click on the button, sl start slice analysis, which gives you the possibility to calculate different um, things like the, the fraction, area fraction of pores per slice across the sample. Okay, I hope this is useful and uh, thank you. See you next time.